Hello, purchasing power, and welcome to another sale-proof car review. Sitting right behind me is a 1959 Hillman Minx, and when it comes to unusual and forgotten cars sold in the United States, this car seems to tick all the boxes. Today, we're going to learn about the Hillman car brand, which is the car brand you either completely forgot about or never even knew it existed, and we're going to determine if it has investment potential. Before we delve into Hillman history, there's something I wanted to address, which is what I said at the beginning of this video, which is hello purchasing power, which might have a few of you scratching your heads, so allow me to explain. There's a lot of creators that are out there that have a name for their audience or for their following, and I never really gave that much thought until last week when the idea completely struck me, like, out of left field. For those of you that are watching for the first time, my YouTube channel started a couple of years ago back when I sold cars and I offered advice to car buyers to generally improve their experience overall. And over the years that morphed into me reviewing cars, particularly really obscure cars for their investment potential. Now for me as a creator, I think the most important thing that I want to instill upon my audience is a sense of empowerment and my audience, which is car enthusiasts, quite frankly, I think they're really underserved and sometimes downright ignored by the mainstream car business. So I figured that one of the ways that I could do that is by calling you guys the purchasing power. So what do you think? Please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Now let's delve into Hillman history. So Hillman is a British car brand that has roots dating back to 1907. Actually, they have roots dating back to 1857 when two men, Josiah Turner and James Starley, started building sewing machines. They later hired an engineer named William Hillman to start building velocipedes, which are those weird tricycle-like thingies with these unusually proportioned wheels in the front that you can see pictured here, and then went on to build bicycles later on. The venture was highly successful with the bicycles, and William Hillman wanted to expand into automobiles. So in 1907, Mr. Hillman and another gentleman, Louis Codelin, partnered so that they could build the first Hillman-branded car. The car, which was called the 24 horsepower model, participated in a local race that was called the Tourist Trophy, and unfortunately the car crashed in the middle of the race, but it created quite a splash and led a lot of publicity for Hillman automobiles. But besides the Hillman name, which got relatively famous because of the race crash, Hillman was really known for building larger automobiles with higher displacement engines, and it wasn't until right before World War I when they built a smaller engine car, which actually saw the most sales success out of any car that they had built thus far. Take note of this because it's important. Fast forward through World War I and through most of the Roaring Twenties, and then by 1928, Hillman was under the control of the Roots Automotive Group. Now, I suspect that Roots was able to take control of the Hillman Group for a couple of reasons, one being that Mr. Hillman passed away earlier in the 1920s, or the fact that Mr. Hillman's daughters had other automotive connections to other competing entities. It's not really clear exactly what happened. But Roots had solid control in 1928, and then throughout the 1930s, they started shifting their production from their larger cars to their smaller cars for that same reason I mentioned earlier, which was the sales success of the smaller engined automobiles. In fact, Hillman produced a car in 1931 called the Wizard, which featured a six-cylinder engine. They also featured a four-cylinder version, which was the first car to have the Minx name associated with it. Unfortunately, in 1933, the six-cylinder Wizard was discontinued. However, the Minx name lived on through the 1930s and well past World War II and beyond. Speaking of which, let's fast forward past World War II and go to 1945 when the first post-war Minx was sold from 1945 until 1947. This car was branded as the Hillman Minx Mark I, and every couple of years, whenever there was a relatively major update that came out within that body style, a new Hillman Minx Mark would come out. And this nomenclature really helped to identify Hillman Minx Marks down to the year even pretty consistently throughout this body style which this body style overall sold from 1945 until 1956 in eight different marks, and it had pretty modest sales success, ranging from 28,000 to 94,000 cars sold per mark identifier, which was huge sales success for the time. It was also around this time when Brian Roots wanted to personally oversee the U.S. expansion of the Hillman brand, which was met in the early 1950s with rather tepid reception. But regardless of the initial reception of Hillman, Hillman was able to make their mark, and especially so after 1956, because in 1956, Hillman introduced the Audax body style Minx, which is like the one behind us here. 
And this body style to this day is very special because it was designed by Raymond Lowry, who is best known for his contributions to Studebaker designs in the 1950s. And the Audax bodied cars over the years sold in series as opposed to marks, and they sold series one through series six. Now this series nomenclature wasn't quite as clear as the mark nomenclature because there were series 3A, there were series 3B, there were series 3C, and they skipped series four entirely. I, I don't know, I'm just the messenger. But the Audax body style sold from 1956 all the way until 1967, which was a pivotal year for Hillman all around. And unfortunately, it was the start of their downfall. Because in 1967, Chrysler Corporation took over Root's control of Hillman and the Minx was discontinued. Well, from 1967 until 1970, they did produce a car that was called the New Minx under Chrysler control, but it was basically a base spec version of another car which was called the Hillman Hunter. It got really, really confusing from there. So Hillman hasn't technically produced a Hillman branded car since 1979. Although they did technically produce some cars that were Hillman cars until 1981 in certain markets, but they were branded as either the Plymouth Cricket or as a Talbot, which was branded as a Talbot because in 1978, Peugeot took over Chrysler Europe operations and the branding just got really confusing and messy after that point. And to this very day in 2022, Stellantis still owns the right to Hillman and the names of the Hillman automobiles, but who knows what the future beholds and whether Stellantis is or is not going to reintroduce Hillman to the world. So this 1959 Hillman Minx Series 3A really represents the heyday of Hillman branded cars, especially before the Chrysler and Stellantis takeovers. And that concludes the very abridged history of Hillman Motors. Now, before we walk around the Hillman Minx, I wanted to mention that the owner of this one is actually quite the accomplished local Seattle car enthusiast. He was the host and co-producer of the Vintage Vehicle Show, which was a TV show about vintage cars. They featured private collections, car museums, car builders, celebrity owners, you name it. There are 465 episodes that span over 23 years of production. He's also written a few books on automotive topics. And Vintage Vehicle Show also has their own YouTube channel and Facebook page, but why don't I let him introduce himself? So with the snap of my magic fingers, here is Mr. Lance Lambert. Seymour, thank you very much for letting me be on the show. It, it's an honor. It's fun to be back in front of the camera again. As you mentioned, my show was on the air for 23 years, the Vintage Vehicle Show. We did 465 episodes. It was a wonderful period of my life. Kind of had everybody on the show. Lena was on a couple of times, Barris Winfield. I've written some books, uh, Fenders, Fins, and Friends, Confessions of a Car Guy, Gears, Grins, and Gasoline, My Wheel Life Adventures, and A Kid's Kingdom, Growing Up in the City of Destiny, which was about growing up in Tacoma. That's what they call themselves, the City of Destiny. Love the books, have a new one coming out here pretty quick. How did I end up with a 59 Hillman? Never in my life did I lust for any Hillman, but I was doing a meet and greet thing at a Quinault Beach Resort Casino. There was there's a two car shows a year there that are really fun shows. I'm in a meet and greet booth inside the ballroom in the casino and this car is parked in front of me. I stared at that car all day long and thought that is just the, the cutest thing that I've ever seen. But I told the owner of the car, I said, if you ever want to sell this car, let me know. And, and his name's Tony, good guy. About two years later, he called and said, come get your car. Uh, so, so it ended up in my garage. If I take this to like here at Cars and Coffee in Shoreline, where there's Volvos and Porsches and Austin Healy's and a lot of foreign stuff, uh, a lot of British and some Italian cars here, they really seem to appreciate this car. It gets, uh, I call him, the Hillman, I call him Henry, and Henry gets a lot of attention at these shows. And it's a pleasure to drive. It's a surprisingly American feeling in its drive, and, and I feel like I'm driving like a, a little Chevrolet or something. It's, it's, a, it's a real fun car. It's great to be here, and it's a real honor to be on this show. I think it's a real, the premise of the show is, is very clever. Okay, I'm going to show you more mag magic, just like Tamir did earlier. Yep. Three, two, one. Whoa! All right, now let's have a walk around of the 1959 Hillman Minx. 
Do you enjoy sale-proof car reviews? If so, please be sure to subscribe by clicking the watermark in the lower right corner of the screen and click the bell notification for a friendly reminder each time a new sale-proof car review comes out. First on the walk around of the Hillman Minx, I wanted to talk about the badge because the Hillman badge is most likely something you haven't seen before unless you're a diehard Hillman fan and you specifically typed in Hillman Minx in the YouTube search query. But for those of you that are here that don't know what this badge is, you'll notice that it's red and it has these three diamonds and they actually have a name. The name of these three diamonds are the Spires of Coventry, which is a lovely name, but it actually has some meaning because in the history section, when we talked about the original company that was started by those two gentlemen, the company was originally called Coventry Sewing Machines, which later became Coventry Machinists before it became the Hillman car brand that we know and love today. Coventry specifically carries significance with Hillman cars because Coventry, England is the city in which the company was started and maintained headquarters until a decade past William Hillman's passing. If it wasn't for his legacy, Hillman Motors wouldn't have been what it was. Speaking of legacy, one aspect of Hillman cars we touched upon earlier in the video was their sales success upon selling smaller cars with smaller power plants in the 1930s. That formula carried to the 1950s and beyond as the wheelbase on this Audax Hillman Minx is 96 inches, which for perspective is smaller than that of the Vauxhall Victor we reviewed. The engine in this car is a mighty 1,494 cc's, which isn't even the smallest motor from the Audax cars as they range from 1,390 to 1,725 cc's throughout the years. This one tops out at 80 miles per hour, meaning it's likely rated somewhere between 35 to 55 horsepower. The transmission the Series 3A engine is mated to is an unusual floor-mounted three-speed manual transmission, complete with an extra forward gear that's labeled EL on the gear shifter, which stands for extra low. This gear is specifically designed for getting the Minx up a steep hill and should not be used to accelerate from a stop under more normal driving conditions. However, what this car may lack in size and sheer power, it more than makes up for in build quality and materials. For example, there are chrome accents everywhere throughout this car. Everything from the bumpers, to the full width grille, to the external trunk hinges, as unusual as they are, to my personal favorite, the extraordinarily designed keyholes. I mean seriously, this keyhole by the trunk has a separate twisting mechanism from the keyhole itself which is very easy and intuitive to use and has an incredible feel to it. Even the internal hinges in the trunk are designed really well and they hold the trunk up solidly without the use of a hydraulic strut so they were able to save on manufacturing costs. Another great design element would be the fuel tank location. The Minx has its gas cap located on the rear, similar to that of the Nash Metropolitan, which we previously reviewed. However, the difference is there's no obstruction to the trunk space as the Nash had this fuel line that blatantly cut into your trunk space. I guess it pays to have a teeny tiny seven gallon tank in a car sometimes. And of course, that high quality pours into the cabin as well, and it rivals that of new cars. The carpet and upholstery is in fantastic shape and it feels really durable. There are also many more chrome pieces on the inside as well, and they're true chrome as opposed to being chrome painted plastics, which personally I'm not a big fan of. There are a few oddities throughout the interior, however, one of which would be the location of the emergency brake, which is a pull handle close to the driver's door as opposed to being located more towards the center console. Another oddity would be the location and spacing of the inside door handle. It's maybe an inch or two from the window and it doesn't fit modern day fat fingers like mine, nor can it be repurposed as an armrest. Another oddity would be this unusually large storage shelf, which is actually quite functional, but seems a little bit like an afterthought relative to the rest of the interior bits on the car, which are very well designed. But besides these oddities, I really struggle to find anything that really detracts from the car's general appeal. It's well designed, it feels solid, and that was further confirmed when Lance took me on a ride around the area in the car. So then that begs the question, is a Hillman Minx a good investment or is it sale proof? 
Well, it's safe to say it's old enough where it won't appreciate like a newer car would, but I think it's important to put this car into historical context. The Minx was the first compact car to sell in the US post-war that could really fit a family. As cute as the Nash Metropolitan was, it really was marketed stateside as a personal car for women, and the Vauxhall Victor came a few years after the first Minxes did, when the compact car had already caught on with the American public, and now competition was pretty heavy, largely due to the fact that the Minx sold so well and made such an impact. This oddly does reflect in the pricing of the Minx versus the US Vauxhall Victors. By the numbers, a project quality Hillman Minx will run you about four to $5,000, a decent condition one will fetch low teens, and a perfect car will command high teens or even low 20s for a convertible body style. That said, parts are tough to source and sometimes expensive, so I wouldn't buy a project car for sake of investment. A mid-range needing just minor work would probably be your best bet regarding growth potential, although that growth potential is limited. Once again, I wanted to thank Lance Lambert for letting us film his car, and be sure to check out the Vintage Vehicle Show on your local TV listings. I've also left links to his books, the YouTube channel, and the Facebook group, in the description below. Do you enjoy sale-proof car reviews? If so, please be sure to subscribe by clicking the watermark in the lower right corner of the screen and click the bell notification for a friendly reminder each time a new sale-proof car review comes out.